Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. Now, if you are a fan of Celebrating Act Two, you know we love our authors. And with us is one of our favorite authors, Herbie J. Pilato, a man who has uh, a great depth of uh, subject matter in his, what, 12 books now, Herbie J? 14. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I counted, I counted 15. Books, but I counted book, 14. <laughs> This book is about another uh, famous actor, biography, Sean Connery. It's a great book, Herbie J. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a long road with this book, let me tell you. Yeah. I wanted well, to get it right. Let me talk about uh, uh, this long road. I thought it probably took you five or six years to, to write it. You've t since told us that it was a little bit, a little bit less than that. But this book is, if there were a master class being given on Sean Connery, this is the textbook, period. Uh, and the, 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 uh, the, the thing that, uh, look, I've read many of your books, they're, they're all great. What was really special about this book, and I think you've taken it to a new level, maybe it's because you've written this 14, 15 others, is that you not only interviewed probably a dozen or 15 people directly for the book, okay, which you've done before. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you had the opportunity to, to meet, uh, to, to speak with Sean Connery for this no. book. It, it passed already. But when you bring in other stories that are published in other places, yeah. you bring it in as if you're the storyteller relating that story. And it's not like, well, I'm quoting from here and I'm quoting from there, but you weave it in and, and the right place so that it was almost like not a mystery novel, but it, it was the kind of thing where you didn't want to stop reading it. What's going to happen? You knew what was going to happen next. And so that's the narrative. It's just such an exciting book to read. It's not like you read this chapter. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. And then you pick it up later on. So congratulations. It is, it I, I have to agree with Art. It's an easy read. Of course, all your books are easy to read, fun to read. But this one is just chock full of information. Mm. I mean, you go through every movie he ever made, his acting career. It, it's First of all, let's go back uh, to an important point, and that is the name of the book <laughs> is called Connery, Sean Connery. And it is a wonderfully uh, detailed biography of uh, Sean Connery's life you break it down, and this is what I loved. You break it, because I'm a fan of Sean Connery. I'm a fan of acting in general. Mm -hmm. um, but really, other than a couple of movies that stuck in my head after the Bond movies, I really didn't know much about them. And this is a wonderful read. But you break it down into before uh, Bond, during Bond, and after Bond. And I have to tell you, I think my favorite part was the before Bond. I knew a lot about the after Bond, some of my favorite movies, The Untouchables, you know. Um, and of course, we have all know that he's almost everybody's favorite Bond. But the before Bond was fascinating for me. Um, talk about him as a struggling actor. Somehow I can't picture Sean Connery as a struggling actor. Certainly or a I young struggling actor. <laughs> so tell, us, uh, tell yeah. us what inspired you to write this and... Uh... And your favorite parts? Well, truly, honestly, I was, um, you know, it was during the pandemic. It just started like in, well, not just started, but October 2020. I really thought, okay, what am I supposed to do now? You know, you can't really do anything. <laughs> you know? Although as a writer and a self-employed person or a freelancer, I was, you know, what do they say? Clandestine for 30 years anyway. You know, or and, and you know, I didn't go out into the world for thirty years anyway. So the rest of the world finally caught up. But uh, no, in, in seriousness, and my agent said, you know what? How about Sean Connery? And then he said, how about Diana Rigg? And how about George Lucas and Steven Spielberg? So we came up with these those three at the same time, three different book ideas, and they sold within three weeks, which was an amazing thing. Um, so. They, quite frankly, Sean, we looked at who died that week. All right. And it was Diana and Sean. Yeah. And I always loved Sean. I really wasn't 
ever thinking that I would write a book about him, but my agent thought, why don't you do something that's not classic TV? Right. You know, and that's how it happened. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so uh, well, I, I want to I hit one, one point uh, that was new to me. I'm sure it was not new to a lot of people because you did a lot of research and pulled a lot of stuff together that was out there. I just didn't know it. And I've always been a big fan of his. Actually, my favorite uh, Sean Connery film is Hunt for Red October, not mm. the Bond films. I, I like I liked them. That, to me, was one of his best. And then a whole bunch of them where he wasn't wearing his toupee, where he said, I'm an actor. You, you, I mean, he wasn't saying that, but he said, I'm an actor, and if I have this physical thing for it, I'll wear it. But anyway, who he was well, saying... Well, when he got, when he was approached to play Bond originally for Dr. No, he said to the producers, I'm bald! Mm -hmm. you know, he's like, why would you want... I'm Well, they wanted him because he was the most charismatic person on the planet. Right. And when he walked into their office, it's like, this is James Bond. Anyway, and by the way... Hunt for Red October is my least favorite ah. Sean Connery. We'll talk about uh, it offline or at the end where you can you can beat me up. But in any event, uh, 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 this is one for the birds. How did he get his name James Bond? How did James Bond get James right. Bond? But, well, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, what was that story? It oh, was it's about, the, about Fleming, the new and yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. An American. Fleming created... James Bond uh, was a bird watcher, and he was a fan of a bird watcher named James Bond. That's right. right. Or a bird lover, <laughs> whatever they're called. Gotcha. Bird gotcha. brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, young, the young Sean Connery yeah. really had no idea that, he would, that there would be a James Bond in his future or that he would become a, a James Bond, the James Bond, if you will, the quintessential James Bond. But he did, as you point out, he did recognize that his physique um, and his his look was really important to him acting, even though he wasn't very successful in the beginning. He really struggled, uh, worked almost for free in, in some cases, as you point out. Um, and he re did, he worked on that look, that that physicality, that strength, the you know, the image that did become the quintessential James Bond. Did did he um, did he have any problem? Well, of course he was struggling. He was happy to get the Doctor No job, right? But did he have any problems being James Bond? Well, you know, and this happens a lot. We we've talked about it with regard to Mary Tyler Moore, Elizabeth Montgomery, anyone associated with one particular role, any star. You know, they get sick of it, and the, there seems to be this protocol development of how they deal with it. They love it when they're first cast. They make a lot of money to become a superstar. And then they start to hate it. And then they really start to hate it when people only recognize them for that particular role. And then they want to have nothing to do with it. And then they come back to it for some money. And then eventually they're like, okay, this is who I am. This is not going anywhere. People love me for this. Before I die, I'm going to come to peace with it. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, but when you reach the status of someone like Sean Connery, the superstar, st he was a movie star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. He was, even at that time, hearkening back to the Clark Gables and the Cary Grants from, and the Gary Coopers from years, years before. Um, so he just had this amazing presence. But he struggled with it like many do. But you know yeah. what? Look, these people are multimillionaires. If that's their biggest problem, they're associated with being one character. Well, sorry, too bad, you know, Yeah. because there are people suffering in the world with a lot of other more serious problems than that. Sure. You know, you're, you're sure. Well, up, you just dug up a lot of uh, really interesting uh, facts that I don't think many uh, biographers would have done. Uh, things like uh, his uh, charitable pursuits that started early on for disadvantaged youth, so they get because education to him was uh, something that uh, uh, would held the key to the future. Uh, you uh, you brought out his uh, uh, self humor, humor about himself, especially in his waning years when somebody found some nude pictures or almost nude pictures of 
him that he used when he posed uh, for uh, art classes uh, when he was young because he had this fabulous physique. And uh, rather than get angry or try to suppress them or anything else, he signed them for the guy. He says, you know, it's what I did then and I'm not ashamed of it. So you found all these tidbits uh, that that really made, you know, all it's great that you, know, you were able to talk about all the interactions on with uh, how the bonds were made and how everybody hated each other. And then maybe they embraced later on uh, the broccolis and the, the saltsmans and the all that's it's, it's fabulous because you wove it together. But these little bits and pieces uh, of uh, his personal life uh, were just as fascinating as uh, the big moments. How did, well, how we did get you a real sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a real sense of the man uh, and the actor, not not just James Bond, Sean Connery, the star, you know. And and I, you deserve a lot of credit for that, pulling that all together to give us a real um, a picture of a human being. Um, he, in fact, you take us from before he was famous, a struggling actor, and you explain how his attitudes changed. Yeah. Um, after he was a star, I don't know exactly when, but at some point, he wasn't a very nice guy to work with, was he? No, I mean, you know, he, he was demanding and complicated and controlling, like many actors. I mean, Lucille Ball was that way, but she knew what she was doing, and she knew yeah. what she wanted, and she proved herself. You know, she had, she was, she ran a, uh, you know, movie studio, a TV studio. And she was like that on the set. Some people would, just like they did with Sean, you know, object a little bit, but they couldn't do anything because he was Sean Connery. Yeah. You know? And look, at, he, he made a lot of mistakes, you know, and, and certainly the, the character of James Bond was not always respectful to women. And Sean had his issues with women in real life. But there were also tons of women who loved him. From afar and and uh, and close friends of him of his and co-stars who yeah. adored him, who yeah. respected him, and who he respected. Yeah, you've got lots of stories in there from um, his famous actress uh, partners um, who talk about how generous he was as an mm -hmm. actor, um, and that he was great to kiss and all that stuff. But. Um, it's interesting. The you mentioned uh, the women in his life. Uh, you start with um, his first wife. Uh, um, I got her. I wrote her name down. Diane Salento. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, he met her early. And he he had take us through the women in his life in general, uh, because of course he had the most beautiful women in the world in his movies, mm -hmm. and he was friends with most of them. He was, and they loved him. They, Barbara Carrera, she wrote the foreword. You know, she was in Never Say Never Again. The four, uh, and this is the 40th anniversary of the movie, which is one of the reasons I'm having the book published now. She she wrote the foreword. She adored him. Yeah. She adored him. Uh, Luciana Pelosi, who played the same character that uh, Barbara did in Never Say Never Again. Bar uh, Luciana played um, thun in the same character in Thunderball, which which is the first movie before the remake of Never Say Never Again, really. Never Say Never Again, in other words, is a remake of Thunderball. Yes. Um, but his, his wives were very interesting figures in his life. His first wife, Diana, or Diane, she was an actress. And so there was some competition. You know, you're dealing with egos. So there was that going on in the marriage. He wasn't that crazy about becoming super popular, and she, as James Bond, and she wasn't that crazy about it either. So that's partially why that marriage didn't work, although it, you know, created a beautiful son uh, that they have. But Micheline, his second wife down the road, they stayed together forever, and partially because she wasn't an actress. She was a, a, um, an artist, and she loved golf. That's how they met. And Sean loved golf. It was one of his most favorite things to do. So it wasn't so much, okay, what is the issue here? Why did he not? It was just two different people. Sean and Diane probably should have never got married. No actress 
or actor should marry each other. <laughs> you know, it, it, in general, in my opinion, um, you have to be different. There has to be something different where there's, you know, m marriages, friendships, relationships are difficult as it is. Why throw in more complex complexes, complexities if you don't need to? Yeah. By the way, I wanted to make a, one, other, one other note that uh, struck me, and I don't know whether uh, this is a theme that just sort of grabbed you where you were just being the reporter of this all, uh, was that it seemed that whether the part was big or small on stage and seen by very few people, he always cared about the acting. The acting was very, it didn't matter whether he was getting paid nothing or a ton of money, he cared about how he portrayed the character in the role more so than I've, and I'm sure there are a lot of actors that are this way, but I just never knew this about him. I didn't think of it in that framework. Is that just something you tripped over or uh, where did that come from? No, I, he, first of all, he loved comic books as a kid. He always loved to read. And he had, did have dreams of becoming a movie star, and that did happen ultimately. But he, um, he enjoyed, he was self-educated. He loved the classics. He enjoyed the classics, Shakespeare, Ibsen, all of that. And he wanted to, you know what, if I'm going to be an actor, I better find out exactly what that means and how to do it to perfection. So he was very very dedicated to his craft and it was important not just that he acted well but that the writing was there he's he was very particular about the scripts that he did i mean towards the end of his career when he did the extraordinary what was that movie extraordinary men or yeah the league the, of extraordinary yeah, gentlemen the league of extraordinary men which was not a good film and which really kind of contributed to his retiring as well as other issues um you know, he was very displeased with that movie, but he was displeased with Hollywood in general by that time. Yeah. Uh, well, I have to tell you, I, you've covered all the bases in this book. And um, it it's the kind of book that I'm going to be reading again and again, um, because You're it's so detailed. You want to go back detailed. and read myself. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, uh, just uh, for everybody, uh, uh, I have the date right. October tenth is when it. Uh, no. October. No, October sixth. October. Oh, October sixth. That's right. Yeah. Is that a? Is that like an anniversary date or something? It is the October sixth, twenty twenty three. Is the exact fortieth anniversary of Never Say Never Again, which was oh. Sean's final bow as James Bond. I wanted to say too, though, that. You know, he was very concerned that James, the James Bond character did not have that much depth or history or character development. He was like, okay, so was he born at 33? He had no mother, no father? Who was he? So that's what he was partially why he wanted to leave the role, because there was no depth to it. Depth to it. Yeah. But when he turned down on Her Majesty's Secret Service, which was released in 1969, co-starring Diana Rigg, by the way, the first Mrs. James Bond, and the first time James Bond got married, he made a mistake. George Lazenby took over the role, and jo Sean was always, you know, where is the character development of, of James Bond? Where is it? He never found it, but it was there in, in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, yeah. and he didn't do the movie. That was a yeah. major mistake because Though Lazenby didn't exactly do a wonderful job and is not that wonderfully memorable, the film itself, itself is considered one of the best Bond movies ever. And Sean made a major mistake yeah. in not doing that movie. Yeah. He came back and he did Diamonds Are Forever, which was not terrific, um, in my opinion. And from Russia with Love, years before, that was his favorite movie because his friend Robert Shaw was in it. And it was more gritty or grittier than a lot of the Bond movies. And right. so but then, I also want to share that you 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 uh, uh, explored uh, uh, throughout his entire life, lifelong friendships he had with the famous and 
and the not so famous as Michael Caine being one of one of those very special people. And so you follow he he wasn't like well he's a friend for the moment. He was friends. No. He he was somebody you could count on. And so at, at this point, there's so many interesting things in the book. Uh, do you want to have a a final word on uh, uh, Bond, Sean Bond? Well, uh, 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 what do you think about? Okay, go ahead, John. I, I, before you get to the final word, I have to tell you, there's two things I really admire about this book. Number one is the pictures. You have some wonderful photographs in there. It's not a picture book by any means, but the pictures you have are gems Thank you. for anybody who loves uh, entertainment mm -hmm. and, and James Bond and Sean Connery. But the other thing is your footnotes, this, as Art points out, this could be a scholarly work. I mean, it well, is. it is a scholarly work in that sense, but it's a wonderfully detailed and researched book about a, a, about Sean Connery. I, I recommend it, highly recommend it. Now, so much. the last word <laughs> from the uh, author himself. Well, you know what? And I've said this about, <clears throat> excuse me, Elizabeth Montgomery and Mary Tyler Moore and many of the stars who have had issues or who have been complex human beings. You know, nobody's perfect. We all have issues. We all have flaws. And when you're in front of the public eye, as Sean was, whatever those flaws are, are exacerbated. And, you know, because every, you're in, in this cage that the entire world sees. So it's difficult to have a life and it's difficult to make mistakes in front of the world. So nobody should treat anybody badly. Men should not treat women badly. Women should not treat other women badly. Women should not treat men badly. Nobody should treat anybody badly. And you know, to single someone out and say that they're horrible because they did this or that, well, those without sin throw the first stone. Hmm. That's all I can say. Well, well I have one last book. question for you, Herbert Jerry. I have one last question for you. Uh, yes, this, uh, we speak, uh, we have a, a uh, we speak to authors all the time where we're talking about that book that's about to be released, but they're already well into the final drafts of the next book. So um, uh, we have to ask you, because we're looking forward to our next conversation, what's next from Pilato, Herbie J. Pilato? <laughs> I love that. Um, and by the way, John, thank you for the mention of the pictures. I tried to be very, uh, very, very um, specific with what I wanted for those images. The next book is Diana Rigg, uh -huh. One Tough Dame. Uh. Um, that's coming out next fall. And then after that, uh, my Christmas, or not my Christmas, but Christmas TV memories, which will focus on all the TV specials from the, 50, the 60s and the 70s, animated and live action. And also down the road somewhere is a my Spielberg Lucas book, and their amazing films and the era of the 80s and the movies yeah. of the 80s. Yeah. yeah, I do want to mention one other thing that I actually enjoy quite a bit. I don't know if it's available at herbyjpilato.com or not, but you sort of have like a newsletter slash blog that has yeah. so many interesting stories. It's almost like a, an entertainment today kind of thing uh, within your special kind of way. Uh, where can people get to see that in general if they're not a LinkedIn member? Yes, um, you can go to LinkedIn and 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 sign up for the newsletter there, which I believe is um, Herbie J Weekly. That's what it's called on on LinkedIn. Then I also have the latest from Herbie J Pilato, which is uh, you just do a, a Google for that. And then there's my my blogs on Medium and Newsbreak. Um, but any questions at all, I'm all, all over Facebook, Instagram. I mean, certainly through, you can contact me and find out anything you need to know uh, within boundaries about Herbie J. Pilato at HerbieJPilato.com. Okay. Herbie J., thank you so much uh, for the interview and for the book. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> very good. We'll see you soon. I'm looking forward to Diana Rigg. Oh, I yeah. Uh, one, one tough dame. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you get, you're giving it away. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, forget <laughs> it.
Thank Have you, guys. Day. You know, I always love coming here, you guys, with, visiting with you. You're just terrific. I mean it. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you again soon. And great luck uh, with the book. Uh, that's Connery, Sean Connery, coming out on October 6th. Yep. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.